Hey there, SolidWorks users. Welcome back to our four-part series. We are honoring all you female warriors out there by modeling Wonder Woman's tiara and indestructible bracelets. In part two of this series, we'll finish up modeling Diana's tiara using some more advanced modeling techniques. Recall in part one of the series, we modeled the center portion of the tiara around a reference surface that resembles a forehead. So I'm going to unhide that reference surface to model the tiara's bands around. We're going to be using the boundary tool to create the band, so we need to create a few 3D guide curves as well as the profile sketch where the band terminates. You can create 3D guide curves in numerous ways, one of which is to use the 3D sketch tool using the spline on surface tool. But in this case, we're going to just start with a 2D sketch on the right plane. Here I'll draw a few splines to lay out the shape of the band. I just want to make sure the endpoints of the splines are coincident with the vertices where the center portion of the tiara terminates. And I'll draw an angled straight line at the tip of the band. I'll reference this line later to create a construction plane for our terminating profile. We need to create the guide curves in two separate sketches, so I'm going to change this lower guide curve and the angled line to construction lines. So let's quickly dimension this sketch to fully constrain it. and I'm going to set some tangency relationships between the splines and the inside edges of the tiara to make sure this band blends nicely with the existing geometry. And I'll go ahead and dimension the spline handles as well to come to the shape I'm happy with. So I'm happy with that shape, so let's exit the sketch. Now to create the second guide curve, we need to create another sketch on the right plane where we can use the Convert Entities tool to copy over the lower spline we created in the previous sketch. Now we're ready to convert these 2D sketches to 3D guide curves. To do this, we can use the Project Curve tool, which is found under Curves in the Command Manager. Within this tool, we simply select the sketch we would like to project and select the surface or face to project the curve onto. Keep in mind you can only do this with single lines or curves, or continuous lines or curves, or fully enclosed sketches. This is why we had to create our two guide curves in separate sketches. We're now ready to create the terminating profile sketch for our boundary. First we need to create a sketch plane, so I'll unhide the first sketch we created, and navigate to Reference Geometry, Plane. Select the straight angled line from our sketch, and then we'll select the right plane to make this new plane perpendicular to the right plane. Now let's sketch on the newly created plane. And to make sure the inside surface of the boundary closely follows the contour of our reference surface, let's use the Intersection Curve tool to start off our sketch. With this tool, we simply select an entity, in this case our surface, and SolidWorks creates a curve where this surface and the sketch plane intersect. From here, use the Offset Entities tool to create three more curves. One offset at 0.035 inches, one offset at 0.05 inches, and one offset at 0.07 inches. Then I'll sketch some straight lines to connect the three curves we just created. Basically, I'm just trying to closely match the aesthetic of the profile on the face that we are starting our boundary from. So I'm going to set some parallel relations between these straight lines and some of the existing edges on the center portion of the tiara.
I'll then use the trim tool to trim away the portions of the curves we don't need. After some trial and error, I experienced some issues trimming away the excess portions of this bottom intersection curve. So instead, let's convert it to a construction geometry, and I'll create a simple three-point arc and add a tangency relationship to make it hug our intersection curve. Now let's exit the sketch and we are ready to create the band using the boundary tool. You'll find the boundary boss tool under the features tab. In the boundary property manager under direction 1 we will first select the starting face where the band will begin and then select our sketched profile at the end of the band. Now move down to direction 2 in the property manager and we can select our two guide curves. So back under direction 1 you have the option to set various tangency relationships between the boundary's profiles and any related existing geometry. In this case we want the curvature of our existing geometry to continue into this band to create a nice blended look. So with the face selected under direction 1, click the drop down and select curvature to face. Keep in mind you may have to click the next face button shown here to toggle through the available faces to make the boundary tangent or curvature continuous too. Sometimes when building complicated boundaries like this you may not get a perfect blend as shown with this edge here, so I'll perfect this blend with a large fillet set to a 2 inch radius. Now recall in part 1 of this series that we left the cross shaped portion of the design as a separate body from the rest of the tiara. I did this so we can create some small chamfers on the tips of the cross to help create some separation between the design elements. So let's just create some 45 degree chamfers at 0.02 inches on the tips of the cross. And to make the design a little more interesting let's add some more chamfers to the outside edges of the various extrusions. Again, we'll stick with 45 degree chamfers at 0.02 inches. We are just about ready to mirror this half of the design, but first let's combine the cross and tiara bodies together using the Combine tool, which can be found in the Command Manager or by navigating to Insert, Features, Combine. Once in the Property Manager, just ensure the Add button is selected under Operation Type, and then select the bodies you'd like to combine. Keep in mind, though this tool is called the Combine tool, you can also use this tool to subtract one body from another, or you have the option to do a Common Combined which keeps the portions where the bodies overlap. Now let's just soften up the cross a bit with some 0.02 inch fillets. So now we're ready to mirror the design. Under the Features Command Manager, navigate to the Mirror tool. Once in the Property Manager, first select the plane or face to mirror around. Then, in this case, we're going to use the Bodies to Mirror option to select the body we've modeled. Ensure the Merge Solids option is checked in the Property Manager. 
and hit the green check mark to complete the mirror operation. So there we have our completed design. Let's just add a few final touches to improve the presentation of the design. First, let's rotate the part in the work area to make it look like it's resting on a flat surface in a realistic way. Navigate to the Move Copy Bodies tool in the Command Manager, and under Bodies to Move slash Copy, select the Tiara model. We want to rotate the body around the vertex located at this bottom tip of the design, so select that vertex. And after some trial and error, I've determined we need to rotate the body around the x-axis, negative 14.311 degrees. Ensure the copy option is not selected and click OK. I'm going to apply a different scene to this design to achieve a little bit different lighting. So under the scene selection drop down here, I'm going to select plain white. And let's apply a satin finish gold appearance to the model. So it looks like the default for this plain white background is to have floor reflections off. So let's navigate to the display manager tab here on the left. Right click on scene and ensure the floor reflections option is turned on. Now let's change the aesthetic of the finish a bit under the View Appearances Manager. Double click on the Satin Finish Gold Appearance, and under the Surface Finish tab, let's select Brushed in the drop down to give the material a brushed finish. And we can change the direction of the brush finish under the Mapping tab. In this case, I'm going to change the mapping to cylindrical and adjust the size of the finish to something I'm more happy with. So there we have our completed tiara design, something any Amazonian princess would be proud of. Thanks for watching parts 1 and 2 of our Wonder Woman series. In parts 3 and 4 of this series, we will be modeling Princess Diana's powerful bracelets, so stay tuned.